What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a great day. It's been a, several weeks, probably two or three weeks since we did a complete garden tour. So today I want to do that and kind of set the stage for all of our fall vegetable planting that's going to be starting this week. I've been out of town for almost a whole week. We went to a place where dreams come true, camping for about a week for the boy's birthday. So took a complete week off the garden. Thankfully we got some rain while i was gone so it wasn't a whole lot here to really worry about and um i had my father-in-law and our nanny water in the greenhouse and all that was was good while we were gone but we're back now got back late last night and i'm kind of seeing things in the garden for the first time in a week just like you will be here so let's walk around and look at everything that's going on talk about what's happening now what's going to be happening soon and at the end i want to show you this interesting kind of dichotomy between these two pumpkin plots and kind of talk about maybe why one succeeded and why one didn't succeed so we'll start off here in these six plots we call the dream garden right here is just a plot that needs some cleanup we have harvested all those sweet potatoes out of here we still got some vines in here those runner vines kind of stick in the ground and keep growing even after you've harvested them over here even though we kind of pulled all those vines way away from the rows they always kind of grow back so i need to get in here and just pull these vines out of here rake them out of here cultivate this and then we'll be planting a cover crop of mustard in here i can't decide what i'm gonna do with this uh blue ridge kale here which is still growing i expect it to kind of take back off if i do leave it here um once it gets a little cooler and i may just end up cover cropping around it the only problem is i do have a line of drip tape down there below it that i'm not using it but um i can probably till around everything and leave those few kale stalks and we may just leave them just to see how long they'll keep growing how tall they'll keep getting let me know if you think we should just leave them here to see what happens but um got some cleanup to do here and then We'll get another cool season cover crop planted in this guy here, that uh, trifecta mustard blend that we got from True Leaf Market. Now these plots here that have compost on them, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on those because we'll cover those as we start planting those pretty soon. But I did get Brooklyn's uncle out here with the tractor to kinda distribute those two big piles around these plots a little bit. I didn't get him to completely smooth everything out. Sometimes uh, that tractor's probably a little too big for working in these plots that are kind of close together so it can make a mess. So I just kind of got him to dump how much I thought I was gonna need on each plot and now I'm gonna smooth it out by hand to get it just right. And this plot here in our no-till plot where you can see the tractor made a little bit of a mess there. It'll be all right. See all that? It looks red to me here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe we get down there, there. So you see all those weed seeds popping up there? I believe that's pigweed. And um, most folks would think that's gonna be a big problem there, but I'm kind of glad they're going ahead and germinating. Um, I thought they would all have germinated during that period where we tarped it, but I guess not. But good thing to see them all germinating now, because we're about to cover them all up with that compost there and we'll smother them all out and it should eventually reduce our weed seed banks. So the fact that they are germinating is kind of a good sign. And um, we might have to wheel hoe it a time or two once we get it spread out. But uh, we'll get that taken care of in a video or so, um, probably within the next two weeks. And then these two plots over here, we've got compost kind of spread out on those or dumped on those and we'll spread them out. And uh, I put, the amount of compost I put on each one has to do with my plans for those plots this winter. And like I said, I'll talk about more of that, more about that in the future. There's where we had our chickens, and I'll show you where they are in a minute. This plot right here, I can't remember if it was the last video or video before that, but uh, we were talking about our fall potatoes, which you can see a few plants in there growing. They're not looking too bad. We don't see a ton of pest pressure. But we went ahead and did a plan B on that video and planted this uh, cover crop mixture of like 15 different things. And so when I left to go out of town, I had just watered it in good. And I came back today 
and we've got this which is a really good sign looks really really nice a lot of this stuff is coming up we can see all those different cool season cover crops and that mixture there coming up really good not completely covering the ground yet but always good to see some really good germination like that we'll leave our potatoes there we'll see what happens and then one good thing is it came up really good between this corn over here this glass gym corn that we're just leaving here gotta let it dry and everything but you can see there between those rows everything came up nicely so we got some good ground cover we won't have to worry about any weeds in there while we let this corn mature now this glass gym corn i was thinking these ears look pretty puny but one of our viewers said that's what this glass gym corn actually looks like it's supposed to be kind of thin and puny looking it's not like that hybrid popcorn we grew earlier this year so i haven't pulled back an ear to check it yet i'm gonna wait a little while to do that but um hopefully we got something there and then over here on the back half of the property we'll skip around a little bit because i want to show you or talk about those pumpkins last so we got our okri trials right here still going on this alabama red okri is getting mighty close to getting cut down um I'm not really planning on saving any seeds from this variety just because I know I can buy seeds from it and uh, I'd have to kind of cover up the flowers to make sure I didn't get any cross pollination. I may do that on some of the other ones but I don't like this one enough to really save the seeds and it's almost getting too tall to pick so I don't know if I'll let the wind just blow it over or if I'll actually come here and cut them down but uh, some of these are on up nine almost ten foot tall there same thing with this uh, heirloom fat okra here it's taller than the alabama red okra in some spots you can see how much taller it is than some of these other varieties these um cajun jewel and the chopi okra and the burmese okra down there we'll leave those and uh, we've been enjoying the harvest off those these real tall ones here I don't know if I'll just let the wind blow them down or I'll end up cutting them with some loppers. We'll leave the roots in the soil there. We'll just cut them at the base and then cover crop around them at some point so um, they can just rot out. I'm not going to spend the time to dig them up. Now over here we have our Balanza Clover cover crop and this came up while I was gone. I'll zoom in here a little bit. You can see got lots of little tiny sprigs there and clover for me is always a little slow to get up and go and this doesn't look near as tall as that other garden cover crop mix we planted but we got good germination here and it should get up going soon it looks a little patchy right now but that's just because those little seedlings are so tiny once this gets up and going it'll cover this whole plot we should have a really really dense mat of vegetation so excited to see what happens there with that Balanza Clover. Now I don't know exactly how much rain we got while I was gone because it's been so rainy this you know late summer that I kind of quit counting and I forgot to empty my rain gauge before we left but by the looks of some of these plants in the plot I'm about to show you looks like we got some pretty hard rain. So this is our tiny plot here we've got packed full of flowers, greens and some English peas over there. You can see these giant marigolds here have falling over on me some of them are still standing up down there to the end but a lot of them have fallen over i guess the rain just kind of beat them down plants still look really really good they didn't break or anything but uh i think i'm gonna have to come in here with a hoe just a manual old school square or rectangular shaped hoe and uh, heal these up a little bit prop them up a little bit uh and get them back standing up because Looks like they got beat down pretty good. Our Savannah mustard here got beat down a little bit, but it's looking pretty good. Probably about to have to start spraying this stuff. I don't see a whole lot of damage yet, but I know it's coming. Those are looking good. These other flowers, the bachelor button and the calendula, are all looking pretty good. Although it looks like they took a little beating from some hard rain. And then we got our pack choy here. I'm starting to see a little bit of insect damage on that there. You can see a few holes in that one few holes in that leaf there so probably need to spray these as soon as I'm done with this video here probably put a little spin aside on those guys and then our English peas are looking really really good I think we might time this just right this year 
these things are not necessarily hard to grow it's the timing part of it it's uh tricky to get down down here because we don't ever know what this uh fall weather is going to do but uh we got a really good stand of them here and uh i'm very very hopeful for a good harvest of english peas in another month or two and then back on the other side of the barn this is our failed fall pumpkin plot here which is just full of iron clay peas now we had those igor orange pumpkins on that far row there nothing i mean not even the first fruit to see there and uh just a ton a ton of pest damage in here a ton of pest pressure you can see there they just cleaned those leaves off end up looking like a skeleton in no time we got a little bit of that over in the other plot i'll show you in a minute but that's what's been happening here just so much pest pressure that we're not even getting any fruits didn't even notice a whole lot of blooms the uh, black footsu winter squash variety we plant on that end of this row uh didn't really see anything there we did get a few of these uh tug river kushaws here which is an heirloom variety of viewer sent us that may be the only good one right there i'm gonna pull it out and probably just use it save some seeds from it and uh we'll try to grow it again maybe next spring but our plan b that we did at the same time our iron clay pea cover crop looks really really good and i'm glad i put this in here or else we just have a failed crop of pumpkins but we've got a nice cover crop in here we can see some peas on there now lots of blooms on these guys here and as you can see i've got the chicken tractor in here now so we had the chicken tractor way over there where some of that compost is now and so i could put compost on that plot i moved it over this way i'll show you these chickens if you can see the light's kind of bright but uh getting pretty big no eggs yet but uh these guys are growing fast and they really really love these pea cover crops they love that knuckle hole one we had over in the dream garden had them sitting here in this spot i just moved them uh, while we was gone i'll move them more frequently now that i'm back here probably move them i don't know every two days or so they really really like eating those peas and um i'll probably just let them work this whole plot here just let them eat all those peas move them around here because there's really no pumpkins or anything to speak of here we are going to plant a cover crop of kale here but i should be able to get that germinated still in early november so at least for the rest of this month we're just going to move around here let them eat on these peas add some fertilizer to the soil there and that little uh, chick lift thing i got on the back of this chicken tractor there is working really really well makes it super easy to move this thing around and then we've got somewhat of a fall pumpkin success story right here we've got those iron clay peas in there but you can see these plants right here look pretty doggone good these are not eaten up now i'll show you some in a minute in this plot that are but for the most part things look relatively healthy in here I and mean, this is that polar bear white pumpkin variety i don't know if we'll get any giant ones that one there is bigger than a basketball nice and pretty there i'll see if i can find some more so they kind of started climbing all over these peppers here still getting a little bit of production from these peppers but a lot of them have been smothered out you can see pumpkins there just climbing all over the peppers that's another pretty nice one right there that one there is bigger than that first one and i like the fact that these are staying white and we got that iron clay pea cover crop in there which is kind of shading everything keeping the sun from kind of fading them a little bit and let's see here here's some of this pest damage i was talking about so this is what was happening in the other plot and i'm not sure what is causing this but they can clean house in no time so although we have some good looking foliage this little kind of localized spot right here is just getting torn apart with a quickness there's really nothing left there there is a nice little pumpkin there probably need to go ahead and grab that one since all the leaves um, from the vines going to that one are decimated but decent sized little pumpkin there not a giant but uh better than nothing and then over here 
see more growth covering up those peppers. There's a couple right there. One, two. So I don't think we're getting the amount of fruit that the seed pack, packet suggested we would get per plant, but we're at least getting something here. And there's an urden right there. They're all about the same size. I don't know how many are in the middle there, if any, but I would guess we have anywhere from 10 to 15 of them total. I don't really know till I get trounced around in there in the next week or two. I'll probably just get in there and harvest what I could find. But, um, you know, if we get 15 of those basketball or bigger white pumpkins out of there, I think we will have done something. So I went ahead and pulled this one, one of the ones where the vines were all eat up. So I'm going to take it inside and show the kids. I'm quite proud of myself here. Looks like maybe a little pickle worm damage on there too. The stem's not hardened all the way, but uh, we'll get this nice and clean and shined up. Put it on the porch for some Halloween decoration. Let the kids paint it, maybe. And we're not going to have enough for Abram to have a pumpkin sale like we originally planned. So that kind of stinks. But at least we did prove to ourselves that with some level of success, we can grow some fall pumpkins around here. So now let's try to explain why those polar bear pumpkins did okay. We've got a little bit of success there. But in that other plot over there, we don't really have anything. Now the first thing that comes to mind would just be varietal differences. Maybe that polar bear pumpkin is just a tougher variety. It got a lot more vigor to it than the varieties that we planted over there. That could very well be the case. I know there are varieties out there that are even tougher than that polar bear. You know, your Seminole pumpkin, your Cherokee tan, those will do all right in the fall. But some of these specialty pumpkins, more decorative pumpkins, sometimes aren't quite as hardy and they kind of succumb to the pest and disease pressure around here. Now, I was pleasantly surprised. I've showed you all the insect pressure. I haven't had any disease pressure, which has been really interesting. Considering the amount of rain we had, I haven't seen the first sign of downy or powdery mildew. It's just been straight insect damage. So that's been interesting to me. I really can't explain that. With the humidity and everything we've had, I would have thought that uh, disease was going to be uh, a tougher battle than the insect pressure itself was. And as far as the insect pressure goes, maybe that wood line over there where that plot is that didn't do so great, maybe it just harbors a lot more pests than this spot over here. They're only about a hundred foot apart, but this one over here isn't, doesn't have a whole lot of these pine trees or these woods beside it, whereas that one over there does. Maybe that's the reason for the, what we've seen as far as way more insect pressure over there than over here with the polar bears. Now the other reasons for the differences I think I can explain because I did treat these two plots a little bit differently just to see if it would matter or not. So where the polar bear pumpkins are, because those looked a little better in the beginning than those other ones did, the Igor and the other ones, I fertilized these polar bear pumpkins a lot more. Now I was having some issues just because I got two rows out there, one row of pepper steel and just the one row of polar bear pumpkins. I didn't have enough drip tape out there for my injector to really pull. I couldn't ever get it to work really well. So what I had to do was just inject through the overhead tripod sprinkler. And I was doing that about once, at least once a week. And I was rotating AgriThrive. I used some 20, 20, 20, just because I was trying to push them as hard as I could. Because what I realized is that some of the insects, they were getting that early growth. But as long as I could keep feeding these things really fast, really hard, that I could kind of outpace the insect damage. And that's what we did with their, where these polar bear pumpkins are. Now that's also probably why they're not gonna get very big because when a certain section of that vine made a fruit, that fruit would get so big, but then that section of vine would just get completely destroyed by insects. And we'd have a lot of new vine growth, you know, outward from that. But that original vine growth there was just tore up by the bugs and probably why the pumpkins didn't get as big as they're supposed to get. You know, I think they can get on up to around 50 pounds or so. And in that back plot, besides putting down some pre-plant fertilizer, I didn't really fertilize those at all. So I pushed the polar bears really hard, didn't really push these back here, just to see if that was gonna be an advantage, to see if we could just push them through the insect pressure. Now in the plot where we failed, the iron clay peas didn't really help anything. 
but I do think they kind of helped a little bit in this other plot. Not only did they provide a good plan B if the pumpkins just fell, but I think they provided some shade in there for the vines. I think they probably prevented some splashing with all these heavy rains, maybe reduced our um, disease issues a little bit. They definitely kept the pumpkins kind of nice and clean and white for the most part. So if I do this again, I'm definitely interplanting with the cover crop. So from my experiences here, I'm not going to say that growing fall pumpkins in the deep south is easy or I figured it all out, but I did figure out a way to salvage something there. And I think the only way you can do it is you got to be really, really diligent with your insecticide program. So I was spraying seven, I was spraying liquid seven. I haven't sprayed it in a while because I kind of let them go, but I, at one time there I was spraying it about once every week. And if you just want to be organic with this down here, probably not going to have much success. I was having to use that liquid seven. We're not going to eat these, so I really wasn't worried about it a whole lot. But you're going to have to spray them with something more powerful than an organic solution, I believe, just to keep up with the bug pressure. If I would have kept spraying them, more regularly, I might have had even more success. We might not have seen that insect damage that we have down there. The other thing is you gotta fertilize them heavily. I mean heavily. You gotta outpace the insect damage. You just gotta keep pushing them and pushing them and pushing them. And that's really the only way you'll keep some viable vines out there. So do I think growing fall pumpkins in the south is a viable thing you can do to make a profit? I'm not so sure about that. I think it's something you can do for fun. Down here, there's not a whole lot we can plant in mid to late summer. So if we've got an extra plot, we'll throw a cover crop in there, we'll throw the pumpkins in there, let it ride, see what happens. But the whole idea of actually getting enough to have a pumpkin stand and sell, yeah, I don't know that that is an actual uh, reality or that's possible. I think this is something we'll do in the future, maybe in just one plot. We'll do it for fun. We'll have some pumpkins for the kids, some to decorate the porch with, but uh, probably not gonna make enough to sell. And we'll always put that cover crop in there just so we have something there covering the soil if the pumpkins do somehow fail. So I hope you've enjoyed following along with this whole fall pumpkin growing test, experiment, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, since the time we planted these following along with all the updates it's definitely been a learning experience for me and we're still learning you know how to really try to pull this off if it can even be done if any of you out there have any successes with fall pumpkins in a trying climate like down here in the deep south definitely let me know what you learned or the kind of tricks of the trade so I can add those to my repertoire in the future and so over the next few weeks on the channel, we're going to be heavy planting mode. We're going to be getting that compost spread. We're going to be putting stuff in the ground. We're going to be talking about installing drip irrigation, putting transplants in. We'll be direct seeding carrots, beets, stuff like that. And the end of October, early November, we'll be putting some garlic, onions in the ground. Lots and lots of stuff coming. And if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me cover about fall planting, drip irrigation, direct seeding, transplanting, anything like that that you'd like to see me cover on any of those videos, definitely put that in the comments below so I can make sure to kind of cover that topic as we're getting all this stuff in the ground. And if you haven't already, go check out our website at lazydogfarm.com. We've got lots of good recipes there, our garden blog, some recommended products, and even some nice Lazy Dog Farm merch you can purchase. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life